Hello and welcome to the section of the circuit analysis tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to solve this particular circuit which has a few things going on in it that are a little different. What we're going to do is we would like to find current I sub 1 and we would also like to find out what the voltage is across this uh, diamond shaped thing which we've never seen before. So let me take some time to talk about this circuit before we solve it. Um, there are a few interesting things here. First of all, there are three voltage sources, right? One of them is 3 volts, one of them is half a volt, and another one is 10 volts. And this is not so unusual. This would almost be like having battery packs at different places in a circuit. So obviously this guy is going to contribute some of the current, this guy is going to be contribu tr contributing some of the current, uh, and this guy is going to be contributing some of the current. And we also have our resistors here. Notice this is 29.5 kilo ohms, so that's 29.5 thousand ohms. And this is 2.4 kilo ohms, which is 1,000 ohms. When you solve circuits that some of the, uh, some of the resistors are kilo ohms, just make sure to use, uh, don't, in other words, don't put 29.5 in your circuit. Make sure you've expressed it in thousands of ohms because everything needs to be done in terms of ohms in your circuits. Uh, we've got 500 ohms here. Now here's the real big thing here. This is called a dependent current source, and that's why the title of the section is Kirchhoff's Laws with Dependent Sources, right? It's a dependent current source. It has an arrow inside, so the bottom line is, for you to remember, is to, is to know that it is a current source. It's just like the current source that we've seen before with a circle, with the arrow inside, and how many amps. You know, we've done that in the previous few sections. We've had current source in a circuit with a circle, with an arrow, and on the side it tells you it's, a, it's one amp, or it's two amps. And I explained to you that those current sources where basically like a little adjustable knob or something that's automatically going on in there, no matter what you hook up to the outside, it's automatically adjusting itself so it's going to push out that much current to the circuit, bottom line. This is sort of the same thing, but it's dependent. And what I mean by that is you have the diamond, forget about this at the top here, you have the diamond, you have the arrow, so the current should be flowing this way from this current source, but the amount of amps, the amount of current, that's actually flowing out of the source is not a fixed number. It's not 5 amps, it's not 6 amps, it's not 10 amps. The amount of current coming out of this source is actually dependent on something else. And what it's dependent on in this case is what's written outside. So instead of 5 amps or 6 amps written outside, what you'll see for a dependent current source is a little relation like this. In this case it's 40 times I sub 1. So what this means is the current that comes out of this source in this direction is not a fixed number. It depends on whatever the value of I sub 1 is. So, to put it simply, if, this, if I sub 1 turns out to be 1 amp in the circuit, then the current coming out of here is going to be 40 amps because it's 40 times I1. And so if this ends up being 2 amps, then this is going to end up being 2 times 40 is 80 amps. And so it's a way to represent in circuits um, a current source going on in, a, in another part of a circuit that might be dependent on something going on in another part of a circuit over here. So it's, it's a nice way of doing that. Now you might say, why do we study this? Why do we study this in electric circuits? You, truthfully, you don't see, you, you usually don't go to the uh, electronics store and buy a dependent current source. But what you do buy is a transistor. And this is kind of a kind of a preview of that. It's not really exactly right, but it's just trying to get you used to the idea that you can have a circuit element over here that's really controlled by a current or something somewhere else in a circuit. That's basically it. And by and large, that's really what a transistor is. You can use a transistor to, to make an amplifier, right? Which basically means you have a con 